Hi, my name is Robert Mack with Keller Williams Realty in Orange County, and today we'll be discussing how is the market changing in 2016. Thanks for tuning in. Before I begin, I want to point out two links on my blog. First, if you're looking for homes in Orange County, click on the home search link. Second, if you're curious to know the value of your home or you're getting ready to put it on the market, click on the home value link. Now back to today's topic. How is the real estate market changing in 2016? I get this question all the time. Everybody I come in contact with, family, friends, coworkers, if I'm at a party, everybody wants to know how is the market. And generally what I say is that depends. Are you interested in buying, selling, or investing? But today, I just want to talk about what I'm seeing in the marketplace. Now, many people say, well, I'm following this economist, or I saw this blog, or I read this web article, and this is what they're saying, so this is what I'm going to tell everybody I know. And what I'm going to do is talk to you about what I'm actually personally seeing in different neighborhoods as I work with buyers, sellers, and investors. So... There are three aspects to this video that we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. But first, what I want to talk about is buyer fatigue. Now, the market is beginning to shift. We've been going up in prices pretty high, pretty fast for just over four years. And what buyer fatigue is, it's when buyers say, you know what? Enough's enough. Prices have been going up way too high, way too fast. I can't afford it. I don't know how anybody else can afford it. I'm done. I'm out. I'll just see what happens. Maybe I'll buy when prices go down. That's what we call buyer fatigue, and we're starting to see a lot more of that. Many of our clients have concerns about how high prices have gone. Now, on top of the buyer fatigue, the second aspect of why the market has been shifting is because of optimistic home sellers. Now, if you take, if you look at the inventory, We have just between two to three months of active inventory, which means if no new homes are listed on the market, it will take between two and three months for every home on the market to sell at the rate homes are selling. And after anything less than six months of inventory is considered a seller's market. So many sellers look at it and go, well, we only have two to three months of inventory. It's less than six months of inventory. So we're clearly in a seller's market. And interest rates are historically low so we're gonna price our home here when we really think it's worth here and that's the biggest disconnect just because interest rates are low doesn't mean buyers are willing to overpay for a property now you add that in with the buyer fatigue and we've got a huge disconnect in the market and so homes are taking longer to sell and in many areas I've personally seen homes sell for less than what the most recent sale in that neighborhood sold for. So we're actually starting to see in some areas a decline and in many areas or most areas, prices flattening out or stabilizing. That's what I'm currently seeing in the marketplace. Now, to add more fuel to the fire, the interest rates couldn't be more volatile. Now, depending on who you talk to, some people are gonna say the rates are gonna go up after the election. Some people are gonna say they're gonna go up later this year. Some people say they're gonna go up in 2017. I think whenever they go up, nobody has a crystal ball, but it's inevitable that the rates will go up. And as a rule of thumb, every half a percent that the rates go up, the home values will have to drop 5% for your monthly payment to be the same. So. A lot of buyers want to buy and secure those lower interest rates, but they don't want to buy properties that are overpriced, so they want to wait. But if they wait, the rates might go up. And if the rates go up, your guess is as good as mine as to what will happen in our current marketplace. So what does this mean for buyers? Well, buyers, if you're actively looking to buy a property, it's my personal belief that by securing the lowest interest rate, you're getting the absolute best deal. Five or $10,000 here or there in the purchase price shouldn't make a difference. If you can afford it, secure the low interest rates if you can find a great property. For sellers, it's a great time to consider selling your home. If you wait until after the election and the rates go up, as rates go up, there are less buyers out there looking for properties in your price range. So by putting your home on the market now and pricing it in line with what the market is telling us, while the rates are low, you could secure a great buyer at the right price. 
investors, if you're looking to buy, if you are looking to get a loan, you may want to look at buying sooner than later. But if you're buying cash, maybe you want to hold off. Maybe you want to see if prices are going to stabilize, flatten out, or possibly even go down. But that's what I'm seeing in our current marketplace right now. But again, every buyer, every seller, and every investor has a different and unique situation. So this video isn't a one size fits all. If you've got specific questions about how the market shift can affect you and you'd like to talk about your big picture goals, please reach out to me. My contact information is on the screen. If you found this video on social media and you liked it, give us a thumbs up, share it, leave us a comment, let us know how we're doing. We want to make sure the content we're putting out there is of value to you. And if you've got any video ideas you'd like me to expand on in the future, shoot them my way. I'd be happy to make them. Until then, happy selling.